Hello to everyone. Welcome to a new session in celebrating Jesus in the Biblical Feast. It's the second session where we first set a kind of an introduction. And I think it will be very interesting for maybe a lot of you out there to go through this. And in this chapter, I'm going to talk about the Biblical Jewish calendar as maybe some of you already know that there is a big difference in our calendar. So if you like to come in this very interesting celebration, Jesus in the Biblical Feast, then come with me and enjoy, especially in this Advent season. And let us figure out the differences and why the changes has been made. So this is your pastor, Yati. The standardized calendar used by the world today is known as the Gregorian calendar. This calendar gets its name from Pope Gregory XIII, who established it in 1582. So that is being a while, right? This is a sun or solar calendar due to the fact that it operates on the principle of the earth revolving around the sun. The different seasons we enjoy are caused by the changing positions of the earth as it makes its course around the sun. As we know, the days on this calendar begin at midnight and last for 24 hours. It takes approximately 365 and a quarter days for the earth to make a complete circle around the sun. This is how we determine the length of the year and the Gregorian calendar. However, some adjustments must be made for the extra quarter of a day. This is why we add an extra day every four years make a leap year of 366 days. The biblical or Jewish calendar is a moon or lunar calendar based on the movement of the moon around the earth. The days on this calendar begin at sundown approximately 6 p.m. and also last for 24 hours. It takes approximately 29 and a half days for the moon to make a complete circle around the earth. Twelve of these lunar months add up to about 354 days in a lunar year. The difference in the calendars means that the solar year is 11 and a quarter days longer than the lunar year. This difference requires the Jewish people to make adjustments in their calendar, or else, after a few years, they would be celebrating their feast days in the wrong season of the year. As we have noted in the previous chapter, God set fixed times and seasons when the Jews were to keep their feast. And for that, write down, see Leviticus 23, verse 4. For example, he told them to celebrate the feast of Passover during the springtime of the year. 
See Exodus 12, 1 to 11, and Ezekiel 45, verse 21. If the Jews did not period periodically adjust their calendar, I was stuck in that word, excuse me, they would miss spring by an additional 11 and a quarter days each year. After five years, they would be celebrating Passover 56 and a quarter days late and completely out of season. The compensated for this yearly difference of 11 and a quarter days, the Jewish calendar also has a leap year. Instead of adding an extra day every fourth year, as on the Gregorian calendar, they add an extra month at the end of every third year. This intercalendar month is 12 and a half days long and makes up most of the difference between the two calendars. This adjustment enables the Jewish people to keep their feast days in the seasons called for by God. Let's now take a look at the Jewish calendar for the purpose of getting a basic understanding of how it is organized. A copy of the calendar is provided at the end of this and I will explain <coughs> it further to you. And I think also you can find easily the Jewish and the Gregorian calendars explained what they show per day or per month or per season. The sacred calendar. Notice that the Jewish had two concurrent calendar years. One was a sacred calendar which God established when he brought them out of Egypt. We learn in Exodus 12 verse 2 that God told them their deliverance from Egypt was to be the beginning of the sacred calendar and that Nisan would be the first month of the year on this calendar. This month was originally called Abib, but later was changed to Nisan during the Babylonian captivity. You can see from the calendar that Nisan corresponds to the months of March and April on the Gregorian calendar. Each month on the lunar calendar may come in one or two Gregorian months because of the 11 and a quarter day difference between the two calendars. The Seville calendar. The other calendar year was a Seville calendar based on the Jewish agriculture season. The Seville calendar begins with the month of Tishri, which corresponds to the month of September and October. This is the beginning of the agriculture season. And for those who are listening now and you have the possibility to also to write already things down, please do. It, but as I said a short while ago, you can find all these things also online if you study Judaism and the historical beginning of the Jewish people, the, as we call them first, the Hebrews or the Israelites. So, notice that the Seville calendar and agriculture season began with the early rains that softened the ground for plowing. 
that was done in October and November. This was followed by the sowing of the wheat and barley. The barley seed in November and December. The winter rains came in December and January to keep the ground moist. This was followed by the blossoming of the almond trees in January and February and the citrus harvest in February and March. The spring or leather rains fell in March and April, concurrent with the beginning of the barley harvest. The dry season was from April, May to September, October. The barley harvest lasted through the spring to the spring months and was followed by the wheat harvest in May, June. The grape harvest came next during the months of June, July. And July and August was the time of the olive harvest. The season ended with the harvest of dates and figs in August, September. Feast Seasons Notice that Passover was the first feast celebrated and represented the first of the three major encounters with God in the lives of his covenant people. For this reason, the sacred calendar begins with Passover in the month Dar, D-A-R, begins with Passover in the month of Nisan, March, April. This was celebrated during the barley harvest. And these feast seasons were visual ads showing the Jewish people how to know God and walk with Him. And as we have said, they were pictures of the Messiah. The spiritual truths symbolized by the feasts are available to all who encountered God through a personal relationship with Jesus the Messiah. As Christian believers, the very first encounter we have with God through Jesus brings us forgiveness of sins and reconciliation with our created God. The result is that we have peace with God as well as the peace of God. For this reason, the Feast of Passover is the first feast celebrated on the sacred biblical Jewish calendar. The Feast of Pentecost was celebrated next because it represented the second major encounter with God, which is His power. We all need the power of God working in our lives. Once we have peace with God through our personal relationship with Jesus, we can experience His power. For this reason, the Feast of Pentecost was the second feast celebrated on the sacred calendar. It came at the time of the wheat harvest in the month of Sivan. S-I-V-A-N, May, June. The Feast of the Tabernacles was celebrated last at the end of the agriculture season and the beginning of the new one. This was during the lunar month of Tishri, September, October. God placed it in this position on the sacred calendar because it represents his third and last encounter in the lives of his people. This final encounter with God represents that place in our walk with God where we find this divine rest for our soul. God's peace comes first, then God's power, then God's rest.
A study of the sacred calendar is certainly not important in itself. Our knowledge of it is for the purpose of understanding God's plan of redemption and salvation for mankind through the person and work of Jesus. As we study the feasts in the following chapters to come, we will see very clearly that God does have a plan for redeeming all who will come to him through Messiah Jesus. Through our study of the feast, we will learn well, we will learn that God's plan for working out his redemption as a definite beginning, a definite process, and a definite conclusion. This relates not only to the person and work of Jesus our Lord and Savior, but also to our lives as believers. They are pictures that teach us how to walk with God and how God's work through history to redeem mankind as revealed in his prophetic seasons. So maybe for your own education, let me give you three questions. Explain the difference between the biblical calendar, the biblical Jewish calendar, and the standardized calendar used by the world. And maybe for some of you already have all this uh, understanding and that is just fine. But I think it is good to view it again because as Christians we cannot neglect the Jewish people because from them we have our salvation. So... Then the second question is, name the two current calendar years used by the Jewish. And three, list the three feast seasons in the order in which they were celebrated. So our next session will be over about the Passover. Well, that's for another time. So... Consider how important this is. And as I said, maybe you have already an understanding about the Jewish calendar and the Jewish people. If you already studied Judaism and because of your interest for the Jewish people. But anyway, for those who are not educated in this, let it be a in-depth encounter In this Advent season, I bless you with a blessed Advent as we see them exactly as some dark days to come. But don't forget that Christ, your life, is given to us. Advent seasons. And God's bless. This is your Pastor Yeti.